Hi, I'm uh, Nick Eastman. I'm a critical care paramedic with Tri-State Ambulance. And I'll show you some of the things that uh, in the uh, five and a half years I've been with Tri-State, there's actually been a lot of changes, but there's been way more changes over the years of EMS. So there's a lot of technology in every ambulance, a lot more technology than I think what most people would, would think of. Um, one of the things that's changed recently um, and changed numerous times over the, the past 40 years is our stretcher or cot or bed, it depends on who you talk to, what we call it. Um, the one that we have here is a, is a power uh, cot. It's, uh, it, it adds a benefit of not having to lift the patient up anymore, um, but it also adds uh, like 70 pounds to the weight of the cot itself. So it's become a little less mobile. You may see it not go into the house as often. We actually have offset that with another piece of technology that's not electric, just more um, engineering technology with uh, our new stair chairs. We see electrical changes in the heart when there's a blockage of a blood vessel. And so this device here, which is our cardiac monitor, which is uh, very similar to the cardiac monitor that you'd find in an emergency room. But then we also have the technology now to interface directly from this device to our cellular modem via Bluetooth technology to transmit those ECGs by email um, to a cardiologist, an emergency room doctor, and I actually get them on my phone. And so we can pull them up right on our phones and take a look at them. And that cardiologist uh, in Rochester, let's say, can look at it and say, yeah, that looks like somebody who's having a heart attack. They need to go directly to the cath lab. This is actually something that's, that's new um, in EMS in the last couple of years, and that's called, it's called the EZIO. Um, for years, we've known that if we can't get IV access, we can actually um, infuse medications and fluids into somebody's bone. Um, and, and a lot of times that you find it, it's going to be in the leg bone. Um, the old way of doing things was to take the needle in manually, grind it into the, into the bone marrow cavity. And so now what we, we have is this device called the EZIO. And it's actually a, just a fancy, fancy drill um, that we take a, a needle and it actually attaches magnetically to the drill. And we find the proper placement, which again is typically in the... Uh, upper portion of your lower leg or also up in your upper arm here right in the shoulder and uh, we basically drill a needle into the bone marrow cavity and we can infuse again any medications that can go in an IV or any fluids that can go in an IV uh, can go directly into your your bone so this is our primary med bag we actually have another kit that has other medications and so this is what what we give on a regular basis. Um, the things that are here in the front in, the, in this compartment are given fairly frequently. We actually have a very fully packed IV tray um, with all sorts of stuff. Tympanic thermometer for checking temperatures. This is a glucometer for checking blood sugar levels. Um, a various array of IV catheters. We'd strap this mask right onto the, the patient's face and we use this just kind of normal weird looking device but uh, and what it does is it, it creates a, a pressure that you have to breathe against. And when you breathe against a pressure, um, it holds your lungs open. And what this has done is allowed us to not intubate as many people as we used to. And uh, patients who, who are experiencing severe respiratory distress, when they get intubated, they stay intubated for a while. And it's a, it's a, it's a big deal. So this is, this is actually kind of a companion to the um, hydraulic electric cot that I showed you. Uh, because of the added weight of the cot, it typically doesn't go inside the house. So we use this a lot more often to get patients out who can't walk. If we put some kind of tracks that have resistance to kinetic energy, we can get somebody down the stairs very easily. And so what we would do is we'd wheel them right up to the edge of the stairs and then turn them back on the tracks and then roll them down the stairs. And the neat thing is the more weight and the more inertia going down, the more resistance it provides. This is uh, used specifically for patient care reporting. Um, and it's designed to be rugged and beat up, and it sure gets beat up. Um, and it runs a software program that uh, allows us to input um, patient demographics and then all of our assessment findings. One of the neat things is if we had, a, if we had certain injuries, lacerations, or, or broken bones, or burns, or something like that, um, it would actually know based on the patient's um, age and gender, it would automatically pick one. But since I haven't put that in there, it gives me a choice. And so let's say it was a male patient. And then we actually have the ability to either choose specific items by body part that's listed out here, 
Or we can also annotate and actually draw and say, you know, there was pain here or something like that. Um, we can see both sides, both the anterior and the posterior part of the body. Um, we can flip them over here and choose the different um, specific items, um, which is really neat. We can document all of our interventions. Um, and if it's a certain patient category, so let's say like a cardiac arrest, we actually have little quick tabs so that we can burn right through it. And uh, all this information then when we're, when we're done with it and we save the call to the server, all that information is automatically faxed to the, the receiving emergency room. And so they have it right there for, for them. For, and then that goes into their permanent record and, of course, is used for any further treatment.